And now we have that green door. Okay, I thought because I had so much time tonight I would like to cover three different topics. Um, the first one is progress, the second one's canaries, and the third one is obviously workflow. Um, by the way, my name is Kathleen Dollard. I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. I happen to be up in the area um, and I heard about this through a friend of mine that one day I may forgive. Um, this is just a little bit about me because I thought you might care. Other than the fact that I'm very proud of both my mother and my son, um, I've done a couple of things, one of which is I've been programming forever. Uh, I was only 14 though in 1972, so uh, you can do the math if it matters. So for those of you that don't know, um, .NET 2.0 is, uh, .NET 3.0 is 2.0 accessorized. These things are extensions of what we already know. Workflow is actually relatively soon. I'm going to get to some more interesting things. But I wanted to start with this as a basis for those of you that might not know that Microsoft did this to us. About three years ago, I wrote an editorial that said that hobbyist programmers, which were very prevalent in the VB6 era and also caused a lot of more small businesses to start up, were canaries in a coal mine. It got a certain amount of attention, and as part of that, we had a lot of focus on whether or not, in fact, VB6 programmers were hobbyists. Now, the interesting thing about that is the canary in the coal mine, the point is not the canary. Um, the point is not the canary. So now as things get more and more complex for us, we need something to kind of put our hooks into. One of the things is going to be workflow, and I want to go through what it matters to the world around us. One of which is, um, that's supposed to say users, and I screwed up my slide. For users, they've got a big world, and workflow takes our program beyond just what they're doing. It takes it on. The first was your, was your program on uh, now, and this is your program. That's your program on workflow. It's going to allow you to organize programs better, and that's one of the cool things. Now, you can do workflow without Microsoft. I just happen to, to know, know about it there. Right now, when programmers talk to their managers, we're talking different languages, and we tend to think managers are stupid, which really isn't true. Um, but <laughs> I don't think. Let's give them a chance. Let's give them a chance to understand what the hell we're doing, and this is a way to do that. So now, it, there's three models here, and this is really scary, because the first model is we're in charge. We like that. The second model is we have to share, and the third model is we share everything. This is a really cool thing because we have different things to do. We get to do the fun stuff instead of having to do all the domain bullshit, which we had to do just to get it done. This is a quick thing about workflow. It's just a stupid little flowchart thing that we learned in the, whenever we learned how to do that. It's got ifs and loops and that kind of stuff, but the individual things that are in here can be fairly complex. I want to show you one. I'm sure you can all see that, so I got it bigger. Um, so we've got different things that we're going to do, like an elf else loop, and we're going to call out to different services and whatever the hell we want to do there. Now, when this comes back down, you're going to see that at the top, come on back down, you're going to see at the top that we're going to ask the manager for, re re for approval. Now, what might happen there? He might never, ever re reply. So we have to have a recovery strategy like fire him, which is fine. So <laughs> who needs a manager? So we, we can build things. Now, this is going to be 15 seconds on state. I'm going to teach everybody how to build a state machine in 15 seconds. So the, we have different states we can be in, whatever the heck they are. We go between them based on events. That's a state machine. You know what you need to know. <laughs> now, looking at a few features on this, I just want to mention the event model for anyone who cares. So we've got our activity. Our activity is going to call out to an exchange service, which is important. And then we're going to listen to it, and we're going to come back the same way. So that's just you know how it kind of works behind the scene. Now, we've got all these different features that we can support, persistence and stuff. Persistence matters because I ask for approval for vacation. It goes out to a store. My manager, who uses the Mac, that's why we didn't need him, comes back to the store, and then he finally approves it. And we're able to have this ha process happen over months or years, whatever length of time we need. Now, is the technology ready? No, of course, it's not. It's 1.0. At least the Microsoft version is 1.0. They've learned some about this in CRM and BizTalk and that kind of stuff. But no, of course, it's not ready because we're going to take this stuff and make it big and it's going to break. But that's okay because the normal stuff will work fine. It works fine for everything they thought about. There's just so much we're going to do that they never thought about. Your web's probably not ready. Um, it doesn't take very much. All you have to do is add the ability to jump around. And that's really the whole story of that. It's going to change your world, and this is where we get back to the beginning. One of which is it's going to revive the hobbyist developer because the secretary can create a workflow. You can write an application that allows you to team with all those people that understand the domain. They're the ones that started the small businesses. Hello, we want to team with them. Now, this is going to rock your world up a little bit. Um, this is especially for the people drinking beer tonight. <laughs> so that's the end of what I have to say. And, uh, 
I actually finished 15 seconds early.